Hi there! In this video, we'll be reviewing the concept of procedural in Houdini. According to side effects, Houdini is an advanced procedural modeling, animation, effects, simulation, rendering, and compositing package. And the main Houdini's strength is that you can do all your 3D tasks procedurally. So, what is the definition of procedural? In computing, procedural generation is a method of creating data algorithmically, as opposed to manually. A fancy definition that does not tell us too much, as it is based on another fancy word, algorithmically. Algorithmically comes from the word algorithm, so let's go for its definition. In mathematics and computer science, an algorithm is a set of instructions, typically to solve a class of problems or perform a computation. So, procedural is a fancy word for creating or generating data by following a set of instructions or procedures. What is the advantage of creating things procedurally? Well, your process will be always live and at any moment you will be able to modify instructions, change them or even change the inputs and your result will be always updated. It will give you great flexibility and power to create, modify, iterate and update your artwork. But how do we implement a set of instructions? In Houdini, an instruction is implemented through operators called nodes. Therefore, a node in Houdini is the basic element that executes an instruction. A node can execute instructions like creating geometry, modifying geometry, simulating, rendering or compositing. Working in Houdini involves creating networks of nodes connected that describe the steps to accomplish a task. And in a very simplified way, it's like defining a recipe to prepare or cook something. By the way, the process of calculating the nodes in Houdini is called cooking. To better understand the procedural concept, let's illustrate in Houdini a real-life process, the recipe for an omelette. First you have the oil, then you put the oil in a pan and heat it. Now you take the eggs and break them in a bowl and mix them. Then you add salt and pepper. Now you put the mixture in the pan and cook it. Now you add additional ingredients, heat and the omelette is ready. Just as this example, at home or work, you can find a lot of tasks that are processes that follow a set of instructions. Although these tasks are processes, they are not procedural. Why not? Because when the task is done, it is done. If you would like to change something, you would have to redo the whole task. In the omelette recipe example, maybe you could add more salt or extra ingredients to modify the omelette. But if you would like it with less salt or less cooked or with half of the number of eggs, you can't. Most 3D applications work as real life. Once you have finished the modeling, sculpting or other tasks, they are done. Of course you have some flexibility with the undo and history options, but most of the time if you have major modifications or if you have new input geometry, you'll have to redo the task. On the other hand, in Houdini, the workflow is fully procedural and the concept of history is not necessary because all the operations are live and updated every moment. You can change the input geometry or you can change any parameter of any instruction and at the moment you will have the new output. You can go even further. You can define variations for the inputs and variations for parameters in the instructions and in that way you will get multiple outputs. This flexibility was enhanced even more in version 17.5 with the release of PDG that stands for Procedural Dependency Graphs. PDG allows you to easily manage the processes of 
varying inputs, parameters, and outputs. You could have multiple flipbooks, multiple simulations, or multiple render sequences. In this way, your research and development process will be greatly enhanced. In summary, procedural workflows will give you great flexibility and power to create, modify, iterate, and update your artwork. That concludes this video. In the next one, we'll be reviewing how and where the data is stored in Houdini. We'll be talking about attributes. Well, that's all for now. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you soon in the next one.